Hi guys, welcome to another video. Since you see me talking, you probably expect another vlog, but instead I'm going to show you my enlarger timer and my enlarger light source that I finished building. I filmed a lot while I was building it, but I didn't really record any in-the-moment reactions. I really needed to finish the enlarger light source and the timer so that I could print something for an exhibition. And yeah, I was getting a bit worried, so filming was not really a priority. So in the end, after I figured out how to control the light bulb, things weren't all too difficult after that. I had to make an enclosure and for this I wanted to 3D print it. And I also needed to make some sort of permanent solution for the electronics bits of the project. And there are two different options for this. One is perfboard, and the other option is to make a PCB board, which looks pretty much like the standard thing that you find when you open any type of electronics equipment. And I decided to opt for the more professional version, because the alternative can get a bit problematic with planning. And I had lots of connections on that board that required a bit of ingenuity in making the connections on the board so that they don't overlap and so on, because obviously they can't overlap. So the PCB had two sides, I designed it in a software called Fritzing, and there you can make your breadboard layout, I, I copied just my breadboard layout, and then it gives you the option to make a PCB board out of it. You obviously still have to make the connections, but you don't have to worry about forgetting components or stuff like that. And also, once you connect it, you can check that everything is connected in the right way. So that's what I did, and then I uploaded it to a PCB board manufacturer in China. And after only two weeks or something like that, it already arrived. Yeah, it turned out great. I, I really liked the way it looked. I even put my own logo on it. <laughs> Because why not? I had to order five, so yeah, I thought of offering it to people I know to send them a board if they want to, but for that they would need the exact components I use and they're not available everywhere, so it probably doesn't make much sense. But if you think you can find all the components, then hit me up, I still have four. After the PCB board arrived, I soldered it up and then checked all the connections and all of that. And to my surprise, after soldering it up, everything worked right out of the box. So the way I made the PCB board was to make it as a shield for the Arduino Mega that I was using. I needed to use the Mega because I was running out of memory a lot, and the Mega has more memory. The shield option made it fairly compact and I could also board the Wi-Fi board on it. I, I used a more standardized version than the one I was using for testing. So it's a Node MCU unit. You can use those on their own, but the Arduino does all the calculations for the timer and so on. So after I had all the electronics working and put together in this nice uh, little package, I could think of making an enclosure. For that, I wanted to use my 3D printer. I've designed little things before, but never something quite as complex, with so many different holes and making sure that the size has to be completely right. And I used a new software and learned it in just a couple of days and managed to make a design and check it and all of that. And then I printed it and it was a long, long print. I think one of the parts took 10 hours or something like that. Those were really big prints, really big parts. The top surface was actually printed from the bottom, so it was built, the rest was built on top of it. So the top surface was actually printed at the bottom. 
Like it's, it started from the top and built its way down, basically, so that it had something to build on. You can't, you can't print in, in thin air. So the surface didn't turn out quite as smooth as I would have liked, and I decided to sand it and then paint it. I wanted to use spray paint at first, but the only spray paint I had was vinyl paint, and I didn't know whether that would work. So I actually used some black acrylic paint, and that worked out fine. In the end it looks very much like a 3D print is supposed to look, like a bit glossy. You can still see the surface structure of the 3D print, which I like. I wanted it to look like a 3D print and not like some sort of molded plastic or something like that. It's not perfect, and that's on purpose. Another thing I had to do was de-warp the parts of it, because when you 3D print something, especially bigger parts, they tend to warp a bit as they cool down. Normally it doesn't make such a big difference, but I printed one of them like going a bit sideways. It was like a, on a slanted surface, basically, and in the end it didn't quite fit together. So for that I needed to de-warp it a little bit, and I used hot water for that. So after I had printed all the parts, I realized that some of the some of the screw holes of some of the components were quite small and I had to get uh, screws for that. But since I was so excited, I wanted to see whether it would actually hold together, uh, so I 3D printed some screws, which didn't work at all because they were like really, really small. It, it held together, but I wasn't really confident of using it in the dark room yet, because if it breaks in the middle of a session, that would be really annoying. So I waited for the proper screws and then tried to screw it together and then I turn it on and oh no, oh no, oh no, the screen was broken in the process of screwing it in because these things are actually fragile. Oh man, I was so annoyed at this. So then I was a bit scared that I wouldn't be able to find the exact same display and would have to maybe redo stuff and the display is always the most difficult part to hook up, so... ha! Ah. In the end I found it though, and that means that I could just screw it in and finally it was all finished. And I was so happy, it looked so nice. So for the enclosure I used PLA, and that's the material that I normally print in, but for the light bulb enclosure, the actual enlarger head, I had to use PDG. If you can de-warp a print with a bit of hot water, then you can imagine what a light bulb can do to a print. So for that I used PDG, which has a higher glass point. So the glass transition point is the point where the plastic can get a bit uh, wobbly through heat and lose its shape. So you want the plastic to have a high transition point so that it doesn't deform when you put it in sunlight or whatever. Generally you can't put PLA into sunlight, it will deform eventually. And since I plan to use a light bulb that can get hot, I actually needed to make sure that it wouldn't deform just like that. So I had to use a bit of a heavier plastic. It's a bit more difficult to print, so I had to spend lots of time calibrating the printer. But in the end I managed to get it to a point where it would come out with, well, not much of a noodle salad or something like that. It's also a bit stronger. Not super strong, but fairly strong. <laughs> In the end I had a functioning and larger light source hooked up to the Wi-Fi and a larger timer hooked up to the Wi-Fi. It was easily connected to my enlarger and everything works.
The build was complete and I was happy and eager to test it out. I took one of the negatives from my self-portrait outing that I showed you in the last vlog and printed that as the first print. And it turned out really great. It was really nice to use and very comfortable since with the timer I could adjust the exposures by f-stops rather than seconds and that made it very easy to predict changes and so on and so forth. It was very nice. The only thing that I noticed was that it, although the screen shows only red, it does leak a little bit of light. I had a couple of light leaks on the print, very minor, but well. So for the next print I decided to use a bit of red filter to block out the light coming from the screen so that it really would only have red light coming out. And yes, everything works great. It turned out fantastic, it works really well. Very occasionally I noticed that it can lag a bit with the Wi-Fi, but this can probably be remedied by not connecting it to my home Wi-Fi here, because we have tons of devices in it. In the printing sessions that I had, it wasn't actually a problem. It never occurred. And so far I've done two prints with it. One was the print that I showed you just now, and the other one was a print for the exhibition in Barcelona, or oh, Villa Sade Dalt, uh, for Revelate. And that was the deadline that I had for which I wanted to finish the enlarger light source and timer combination. So in the end I reached my goal, I built an f-stop enlarger timer. I programmed all thing myself, I didn't use the code that I found online, I had a look but I have to say, I didn't quite understand it. Every programmer has their own style and ways of working, so even variable names can be confusing. And since I programmed it myself, I also learned more about f-stop exposure and stuff like that. It was generally a very useful experience. As for the next project, this is actually only one part of the project since the main reason for building this whole thing was to make an enlarged light source for 4x5 enlarger. This test on my regular 6x7 enlarger was just to test out whether the concept even works at all. And it does, which means that now I can go ahead and try to design the 4x5 version. I'm still having problems with how to mount the whole thing since my only 4x5 camera is really heavy. I'm sure I can figure it out eventually. <laughs> so that's the next step, making a 4x5 version of it all. I already have some 4x5 negatives that I'm dying to print, and the 4x5 enlarger is the only way. And that was the origin of this whole project. In any case, I think it was a really cool build, and I had lots of fun making it. It gave me tons of ideas for other stuff I could do with Wi-Fi chips. It was a big project, so if you want to undertake something like this, you would have to know quite a bit of programming, I think. Especially for the timer. The rest is not so difficult, but the timer is very difficult to program. Especially with the memory limitations of the Arduino. If you are not experienced with Arduino and with C programming, I suggest that you try to see about the open source version of an f sub timer that is out there. I will link it in the description. And if you manage to get the exact same parts, then you can use it out of the box. It looks like very decent code. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was very much only electronics, but connected to darkroom stuff. So hopefully also interesting for you photography people out there. And if you like the video, then please click the like button and maybe subscribe if you haven't done so already. I make vlogs about my studio practice here. Drawing, painting, photography, electronics, dabbling, all sorts of stuff like that. If you're interested in that sort of thing, stick around. I'm always happy to have you. In any case, I hope to see you soon for another video. Bye! Where a plastic 
starts to become sort of limp and go wobbly and disintegrate and lose its shape and what the f <laughs> and it's a uh... oh, off the first 